In this video we'll be talking about stream functions. So from the conservation of mass for incompressible flows we learned the following. The divergence of the flow field has to be zero. In index notation that would be dui dxi is zero. Let's consider the specific 2 day case, so in 2D, for example, plane flow, we have du by dx plus dv by dy is 0. I'll call this equation 1. Now we define a scalar field, psi, which is a function of x, y, and time t, such that the velocity u, so the velocity in the x direction, satisfies d psi dy, and the velocity v satisfies minus d psi dx. Now you may wonder why would I do that? Well, it satisfies a particular property. If we sub this into equation 1, you will find that d by dx of d psi dy plus d by dy of minus d psi dx is just d2 psi dx dy minus d2 psi dy dx, which is just zero. So the scalar function psi always satisfies the no divergence condition for incompressible flows. So what is the physical interpretation of what psi represents? Well, to get at that, we will substitute our expressions for u and v into the streamline equation. So remember, the streamlines obey the relation dx by u is equal to dy divided by v. Let me rewrite this as v dx minus u dy equals zero. So now if I substitute my expressions for u and v in here, I'm left with d psi dx dx plus d psi dy dy is zero. And the left-hand side here is just the definition of a small element, d psi. So what that means is that as long as we're on the streamline, d psi is zero. In other words, streamlines are contours of the stream function. So what does that mean when streamlines are contours of the stream function. Let me draw sort of a simple schematic here. We have two streamlines. So the stream function always has the same value. So let's say this is psi and this is a adjacent streamline that has some value psi plus d psi. Yeah? So they're fairly close. Now if we look at the fluxes here, so you might have some flow field, right, and they will be flow field because of the streamlines, the way they are defined, it'll look some, like something like this, because the flow field has to be tangential to the streamlines. So we can ask, what is the flux between two points here? Yeah, what is the flux between two streamlines? So if this is point x, then this would be point x plus dx, and this line here is this line is dx, and then we have some flux through, yeah, the sum total, basically the integral of all these little velocity flow vectors. And the way we can compute that flux, really, it is it has to be the same as the fluxes into these two line segments, it has to be the same as the flux out of the line dx. And the flux into here is simply the minus u 
times dy and the flux flowing in the vertical is the vertical component times the line segment perpendicular to that vertical component. So it's Vdx. So really Vdx plus minus u dy is simply minus d psi dx times dx minus d psi dy times dy equals minus d psi. So what we've done here is basically consider the volume flux between two streamlines. So the physical interpretation here is that the volume flow rate between two streamlines is just the difference between their psi values. And so that means that the volume flow rate between these lines here is always the same. And when the lines are further apart, then the flow is slower because this distance here is wider. And when they're closer together, then the flow has to speed up because the distance is more narrow. So let me just write that out. Okay, finally, let's talk briefly about the vector notation. So in vector notation, we can write that u is nothing but k cross the gradient of our function psi, where k hat is the up vector, right? So k hat is just the up unit vector, 0, 0, 1. Let's show that this really is the same as what we found earlier uh, using index notation. So if we have, in general, u is the cross product of two vector fields a and b, then we've shown in index notation that this is just epsilon ijk a j b k from back in the tensor chapter. So let's write that here. We have ui equal epsilon ijk delta j3, that's our k vector, right? It's 0 for j equals 1 and 2, and 1 for j equals 3. Um, and then d psi dxk. So in order to do the contraction between jk and uh, delta j3, we have to permute the indices here. So that means... If you permute j and k, you pick up a minus sign. So it's minus epsilon i k j delta j 3 d psi dx k. And now you can contract that. And that just means that the j here turns into a 3. So it's minus epsilon i k 3 d psi dx k. And in order to now contract k 3 and k, we have to permute again, and so we pick up another minus sign. So now it's epsilon i 3k d psi dxk. And that only has two non-zero components, namely when k is 2 and when k is 1, because epsilon is 0 when k is 3. So now we have epsilon i 3 1 d psi dx 1 plus epsilon i 3 2 d psi dx2. And that means u1 only leaves us the second term where we have epsilon 1, 3, 2, d psi dx2, and that picks up a minus sign, minus d psi dx2, and u2 is, leaves you with this term up here, it's just d psi dx1. And that is indeed the same form as we've seen earlier.